Uh, hello, uh, this is Ty Brown, and I wanted to make a quick video to address something that is highly controversial in our line of work. I'm referring to service dogs and training collars. Yes, the dreaded electric collar. You see, in the service dog industry, there's a little bit of a dirty secret. So many service dogs become untrained with their obedience training within a few short months of going to their new home. The reason being is that most service dogs these days are trained using solely positive methods of treats and rewards. Reward training is a vital part of any training program. The problem is when the training is based solely on rewards. Even with a great deal of training, there can often be many things more interesting than a treat, such as a cat, another dog, or simply being in public. For service dogs, this can be a disaster. Their whole life is spent in highly distracting environments. Perhaps a professional trainer may be able to convince a dog to forego those distractions in favor of a treat, but the average dog owner is often out of luck. You won't find any data or studies, but if you're in the service dog industry like we are, you hear story after story of service dogs trained only with positive methods becoming untrained within a short period of time. Which brings us to why we train the way that we do at our company. We employ a stabilized approach to dog training, which means we use tons of positive motivation, but we stabilize that with proper correction, which leads us to the tools that we use. The e-collar is not used as a zap tool. In fact, we use it on low levels, and it's a teaching tool. It's not even there as a punishment tool for the most part. In the case of children especially, we need to train the service dog to patiently follow and ignore other distractions. If an adult or a trainer was able to follow the child around, they could simply use the leash to guide the dog back to position anytime the dog got too far from the child. With an e-collar, uh, we can accomplish the same thing. It's not used as a painful punishment tool. It's used as an invisible leash to guide, show, teach, and to clarify. Take, for example, this footage of my daughter. These dogs have been in training for a month. That's it. They came to us from homes where they were disobedient and unruly, which is actually why we got these dogs in the first place. Um, within a month of training, they're showing uh, on and off leash control with an eight-year-old girl, even in areas of high distraction, as you can see. There is no training program based on treats and purely positive methods that is capable of accomplishing that anywhere. Notice as well the engagement these dogs have with my daughter. Notice how they want to work for her, not for a pile of treats. Training in our style means several things. Number one, more reliable results. We can overcome bigger distractions and gain handling skills for children in ways that can be, can't be accomplished with just treats. And number two, faster results. Like I mentioned, the training you're seeing is just a month into the work. There isn't a way to replicate that level of training with just treats. While it's becoming politically incorrect to use any sort of training collar for service dogs, we find that the results we are producing are more complete and faster than those being produced by other companies across the country. I encourage you, when researching your next service dog, bear in mind that the methods used to train the dog are important for the day your dog comes home, but also for many years to come.